Hey guys, this is Andrew with RockClass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, Matt's going to be teaching you how to play the classic Weezer song, Island in the Sun. Now, I've got to say that this has always been a really fun song. Every time it came on the radio, it just gives me that fun summer vibes, that feel-good kind of music. And I did get a chance to play through Matt's arrangement, and I've got to say, he did a great job putting it onto the ukulele. It's a lot of fun to play. But I do think there is one challenging aspect about it, and that's that this song has quite a bit of syncopation, which means that we're going to be hitting off the beat, right? So that's going to make it a little bit challenging to play because when you play on the beat, which means you're playing on the downbeats like one, two, three, four, when we play off the beat, when we have syncopation, we're going to be accenting or hitting on the ends of the beat. So instead of hitting one, two, three, four, you're going and 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 <laughs> you're hitting on the ends which doesn't come quite as natural as playing on the beat with that in mind i would recommend singing the music so sing out each measure and that's going to really help you get the timing down and get the melodies and the rhythms kind of ingrained in the membrane so remember if you can sing it you can play it. So that's my advice as you jump into learning this tune. Now with that said, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this lesson. So in this video, Matt's gonna be teaching you how to play the entire arrangement, but if you wanna get the tabs to print off and follow along with, that's gonna be available at this link right here, or you can go to the site, rockclass101.com, do a search for Island in the Sun, and also on that page will be the interactive on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Matt to teach you how to play this, and then I'll catch you at the end of the video. Hello, my name's Matt Dahlberg, and today we're going to learn a solo ukulele arrangement of Island in the Sun by Weezer. This is made for a high G ukulele, and let's go ahead and dive into the intro, Melody A. To start this, we're going to be playing this E minor chord, but all that you actually have to do is pluck your open G and your open E strings together. I like to use my thumb and middle finger here. We're gonna play that a second time. Then we're going to play open on the E and open on the A for an A5 chord. Just pluck those twice. Then you're going to do it one more time. And then it's going to play this D chord. Now, to do this, it's actually kind of tricky because it doesn't look like a D chord. We're going to bar the second fret of the C, the E, and the A strings, but we're only going to play the C and the E strings together. And that's the end of that first measure. And if we play it through, it should sound something like this. Two and three and four and... Now, when we go into the second measure here, we're going to still be holding that little D chord. We're going to pluck that to start. And then we're going to play this G5. And to do this, very simply, we just take our middle finger, add it to the third fret of the E string, pluck our E and, or excuse me, our C and E strings together twice. And then for the little hip hip that they sing, we're going to play two on the A, which is already there within the bar. And that's why we played that D that way and then this G5 that way. It's just setting everything up. So measure two sounds something like this. Two and three and four and... And if we listen to measures one and two together, it should sound something like this. Two and three and four and... Now, what's cool about this is it repeats. And it repeats four times. One more. And that is the entirety of the intro section. It's just measures one and two played four times in a row. It's kind of the main riff of the song, right? So if you find the next parts really challenging, just kind of come back to this and it's really fun to work on.
So let's go ahead and go on to melody B now, which is the verse. It's going to start off exactly the same, the same little E minor, the two open strings. We're gonna play that twice. The same little A5, we play that twice. But now it's going to be a little bit different. Instead of playing that a third time, we're going to play open on the G string. And this is actually starting the melody phrase. And then we're going to play seven on the A string with the pinky. And then to finish this measure three, which I think is one of the hardest of the whole song, we're going to slide that pinky down to five on the A string and add our index finger to bar completely across the second fret for this D chord. We're gonna pluck all four strings together. So again, I think this measure is really difficult because there's a lot of movement, but it sounds and looks something like this. Two and three and four and Going on to measure four, we're going to continue holding this D chord, pluck the C string, and then we're going to play three on the A string. Now what I actually like to do for this three on the A string is I like to use my ring finger here and play that just there, because then from there we're going to go to a G chord. And to play this G chord, I like to do it like a normal everyday G. Index here on the second fret of the C string, ring finger here on the third fret of the E string, and middle finger here on the second fret of the A string. So you see that that ring finger kind of comes up and then allows everything else to kind of pivot. You're going to pluck your C, E, and A together. Then you're going to play open on the G, three on the A, which you just add your pinky there, and then two on the A, take the pinky off, leaving the middle finger in position. So measure four in time sounds and looks something like this. Two and three and four and. Now if you get stuck and you play like that three with the middle finger, which if you look really closely I did, then I had to kind of move everything. So playing that three with the ring finger just makes it a little bit easier as you're making those transitions. But let's go ahead and hear what measures three and four should sound like. Something like this. Two and three and four and. Pretty challenging. Going on to measures five and six. Measure five starts off the same way measure one and measure three did. But now, instead of playing the, the zero on the G or the open E and A a second time, like what measures three and one did, we're gonna play open on the E string. Then we're going to play two on the A string. I like to use my ring finger for this. And then that sets up the last chord of this measure, which is the two on the C with the index finger, two on the E with the middle finger, removing that ring finger off to be open on the A. Pluck your C, E, and A together. So it's another little D chord. So measure five is something like this, two and three and four and. Going right into measure six, we're going to be still holding this shape, play the two on the C. Play open on the G. Now we don't have to move anything here. It's the same chord. We're going to just pluck our G, C, and E now, which creates a G major seven sound. Then we're gonna play open on the G twice. So measure six sounds something like this. Two and three and four and. And measures five and six should sound something like this together two and three and four and. Now what's cool about this is it repeats and it plays measures three, four, five, six a second time. So it goes three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six, and that is actually all of melody B, the verse. So let's go ahead and hear what that sounds like. Should be something like this. Two and three and four and. Repeat. And from here, we now go on to melody C, which is the chorus. And I think it gets a little bit easier from here overall. I think the hardest part of the song is pretty much through. But with this chorus, what we're going to do is start off the same way we did on measure one, on measure three, and measure five. We're going to play... 
exactly the same. But then we're going to play open on the G twice. And then we're going to go back to that first D chord that we played, which we can do that bar there. Um, so we're going to play the C and E strings together. So measure seven sounds something like this. Two and three and four and. Now, when we play that D chord, we're going to go on to measure eight and continue holding that D chord. Play open on the G. Then we play open on the C and the A together, so we just take our hand off. Then we're going to play open on the G again. And then we're going to play two on the A string twice. Now to do this two on the A string twice, we're going to also want two on the C string for the first one. So there's a couple different ways that we can do this, but the one that I like to do for this is very simply just taking two fingers, index finger here on two of the C, middle finger here on two of the A, plucking those two together then play two on the A. So measure eight in time sounds something like this. Two and three and four and. And measures seven and eight, which is the start of the chorus, should sound something like this. Two and three and four and. And as we go now to measure nine, measure nine starts off the same way as everything else. But now we're going to play two on the A twice and we're going to play that with our ring finger. And the reason for that is we're going to set up that same D chord that we did earlier with our index finger on the second fret of the C string, middle finger here on the second fret of the E string. So measure nine in time is something like this, two and three and four and. Going into measure 10, we're going to play holding this open on the A string. And then we're gonna play two on the A string, stack that ring finger in there. And then we're gonna move chords. We're going to a G sus four, really easy to play this though, because you just see these three fingers where they are. Move the middle, and the ring fingers up one fret so that you're at zero, two, three, three, and you're gonna pluck all four for that G sus four. Pretty cool, right? And you play open on the G, move the pinky up to five on the A, play that twice. So measures, measure 10 in time should sound something like this, two and three and four and. And measures nine and 10 should sound something like this, two and three and four and. Going right into measure 11, it's very familiar to start. <laughs> Same thing we've been doing, but then we're gonna play five on the A string with the pinky finger, and we're gonna play that twice. And then we're going to play a D chord to finish measure 11, same way that we did uh, towards the beginning of the song, bar all the way across the second fret with the index finger, leaving the pinky here on five of the A. Pluck all four strings. And then we're going to play three on the A string. And there's a couple different ways that we can do this. What I like to do though is very simple. I like to just take my middle finger and place it here. And then from this point, what you'll notice is that we're going to go on to measure with 12, the G sus four. So the index finger is going to move down to be on the second fret of the C string with the middle finger being on three of the E and the A. So it's this little double bar. We're gonna pluck all four of those. Then we need to play two on the A string. To do that, just take the middle finger away, play that as it is. And then for the end of this measure 12, to end this first part of the run, we're going to play an E minor chord. To do that, ring finger on the fourth fret of the C string, middle finger on the third fret of the E string, and index finger here on the second fret of the A string. Pluck all four. So measures 11 and 12 have a very unique sound to them that I really, really like. And this is what they sound like together. You'll hear that's kind of going down. It's this descending chord progression. So 11 and 12 in time should be like this. Two and three and four and. Continuing this sort of sound, we go on to measure 13. We're gonna play open on the A, just taking that finger off. Then an A minor chord. Index finger here on the second fret of the G string, pluck all four. Open on the G, just take that index off. Going to a D chord, we're going to take those two interior fingers. We're gonna put 
play some there. And then we're going to play three on the E string, which we just slide up. And then we're going to play that G5 we did before, index and middle finger on the second fret and third fret of the C and the E string. So it's the same stuff that we've kind of done before at that point. So 13 and 14 paired together in the same way as 11 and 12 should sound something like this. Two and three and four and... And now that we can hear all of melody C, the whole chorus, let's go ahead and go back to measure seven and hear seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Should sound something like this. Two and three and four and... Now from here we are on to the bridge of the song and honestly I think this is so much easier than the rest of the tune but it sounds pretty cool. We're going to start with a D chord and we're going to play this D chord like this. Take your index finger, bar it across the second fret of the G, C, E strings, raising it off so that that A string is open. This is a really tricky way to play this chord but it's really really nice. What you do, the trick, is you see the little crease where your finger bends. Put the E string right in there and then bend off a little bit so that that A string can come on open. It's like yoga for your fingers. If you've never done it before, it's going to feel impossible, but I promise you, you will get it with practice. Really, really good way to play D. If that's too challenging, it's okay to do a three finger method as well, but this is way more efficient. So we're going to do a down strum. Just take your index finger, strum across all four strings. And then we're going to play two on the C and two on the E together three times. Really straightforward there on measure 15, so it sounds something like this in time. Two and three and four and... <laughs> Doesn't get much easier than that, right? Then we go on to measure 16 with the G chord. This is a little more tricky. We're gonna play the G with our bar. Um, and the reason is, is because I want you to actually mute the A string. So what you do is with this bar, you just take the pressure off a little bit so that that A string is muted, still holding the C and E though. Because we're gonna do a down strum here on this G, and then we're gonna do another down strum, collapsing that so that the two on the A rings out. And then we're gonna play three on the E, or excuse me, zero on the G, followed by a three on the E, and then two on the A. So that measure sounds something like this on 18. Two and three and four and... Then we go on to measure 17. Well, before we do that, let's go and hear what measures 15 and 16 sound like together. And don't worry, there's a little cheat here. Here's what 15 and 16 sound like. Two and three and four and... Now, when we go on to 17 and 18, seem familiar at all? Well, 17 and 18, are exactly the same as 15 and 16. No variation whatsoever. They are exactly identical, which is kind of cool. Half the work, double the playing. <laughs> then from here we go on to measure 19. Now at 19, what I like to do is use my thumb with this. You could also strum with your index finger. It's kind of a personal call. I like the sound of strumming with the thumb though. We're gonna start on 19 by strumming a C chord. Um, and what we're going to do is just play our G, C, and E strings open. And then we're gonna have that ring finger ready to go on the third fret of the A string because the next thing that's played is through that whole thing. And we're gonna play that a second time. And then the last note of this measure is going to be a C major seven. We just make our middle finger now on the second fret of the A string and strum all the way through. So measure 19 sounds something like this in time. Two and three and four and... Really straightforward. Going on to measure 20, we're gonna play this A minor add nine. Leave your middle finger where it is on the second fret of the A string. Take your index finger and place it on the second fret of the G string. And then we're gonna strum through all four. Then we're gonna take the middle finger off, play just an A minor, two, zero, zero, zero. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our ring finger, place it on the third fret of the E string, strum those. And then we're going to take that ring finger off and strum through the E and A open. So measure 20 sounds something like this in time. Two and three and four and. and if you accidentally hit extra strings, it's totally fine. That's what's cool about this part. It's meant to be creating dynamics and depth through these sort of strums through. So measures 19 and 20 should sound something like this. Two and three and four and. Going on to measure 21 now. Measure 21 is actually a little bit tricky because of the timing. It's going to be using 16th notes. Now, I really recommend instead of focusing on counting this to get it exact, get the feel because the, the pull off is really quick here and that's what creates the sound. So we're going to strum through 2222, which is this uh, D6 chord. And I like to do a strum. And then what we're going to do is take your middle finger, place it on the third fret of the A string, play that immediately pull off to two on the A, which is there with the bar. And if you don't know how to do a really good pull off, check out the links down below. We got a couple different things on it, but my big trick is you actually pluck the string. It's not just taking the finger off, it's plucking it. Oops, that wasn't a very good sound. It's physically plucking it as you do it. So if you just pull it off versus pluck it, you can really hear that sound. This finger is physically plucking the string as it goes off. And then immediately after plucking it off on two, I'm gonna play open on the A string. And that's a little bit tricky, but that's what creates that sound. So that sounds something like this in time. Two and three and four and. Going into measure 20 now, we're going to play that same D chord we did before, the bar with the open A string. Strum that three times. And then you're gonna play two on the A twice to end this measure. Just collapse the bar and play it that two times. So measure 22 sounds something like this in time. Two and three and four and. And measure 21 and 22 sounds like this in time. Two and three and four and. And that wraps up the bridge section, Melody D. So let's go ahead and hear it in its entirety, starting with measure 15 and going through measure 22. It should be something like this. Two and three and four and. Now, from here, we go on to the outro, but here's what's cool. The outro, you already know. You already know how to play this. There is nothing new with the outro. Measures 23 and 24 are exactly the same as measures 1 and 2. And guess what? Measures 25 and 26 are also exactly the same as measures 1 and 2. So let's go ahead and hear these first four bars of the outro. 23, 24, 25, 26, which again is just the same as 1 and 2 repeated. Should sound something like this. 2 and 3 and 4 and... Going on to 27 and 28, well 27 is exactly the same as measure 1 or 25 or 23, it's the same thing. And then measure 28, the very last measure of the song, is a little bit different in that you don't play the 2 on the A twice. If you remember every single time we do this sort of, that 2 on the A happens twice, right? We just don't do that. And we let it ring and finish that sort of sound. So measures 27, 28 sounds something like this. Two and three and four and. And for the whole outro, the whole melody E, 
should sound like this. Measures 27 through, or, uh, 23 through 28, excuse me. Two and three and four and. And there you have it. That is Island in the Sun. Now, a couple notes. This is a really hard one. I struggled mightily with getting the performance ready with this song. And the reason is, is because of all of the syncopation. Syncopation is accents on offbeats. And the melody of this is always on those offbeats, on the ands. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. And it makes it really disjointed and difficult to play. So when you're practicing it, this song, a metronome can certainly help. But also just listen to the original song by Weezer and really get it in your soul so that you can feel that groove. It's a tough one. It took me a long time and a lot of practice to kind of get comfortable with it. So if you're struggling, know that I did too, and it's all okay. It's part of the process. Another quick note is you'll notice that this song can sometimes sound better when you mute the strings a little bit. So I'll do like... All that I'm doing there is I play a note and then I release the pressure to make it, to make it more what we call staccato. So that's another little trick that you can do with this song to create some different sounds as you're going through. But as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys next time for the next tutorial here on Rock Class 101. Thanks so much. All right, guys, so this week's ukulele lesson was a ton of fun. This is one of those feel-good summer vibe tunes. And if you're watching this lesson at the time we're releasing it, it's July of 2022, so it's perfect timing. So guys, I do want to give you a friendly reminder that if you wanted to get the tabs to print off Keep For Your Records, that was available at this link right here. Or you can go to the site rockclass101.com, do a search for Island in the Sun. Now also on that page was a really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. So you can literally hit play, you can watch that tab scroll across in real time, highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down, all that fun jazz. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.